Hi, everybody. Good morning. Wednesday, March. March. I keep thinking it's March. May 27th, 2020. So, today we're working on, you know, a little hodgepodge, mostly wiring. Right, about 99% wiring. So, what you see me working on here is actually grouping wires together and doing a lot of labeling and shrink wrapping. One thing I've learned while doing all of this fuselage wiring is that labeling is key and grouping is key, right? So, you know, to keep things easy and to keep them from becoming rat's nests, I found it easier to just, you know, let's say that I've got a bunch of wires that all go to one specific instrument. Great. Let's just group all those wires together. Let's shrink wrap them together. And then that way, when we put the bundle together, we can identify where they are, and when we need to replace them, it'll be easy enough to take them all out. Okay, so that's that's one of the approaches to uh, wiring for dummies. I'm the dummy, by the way. Just in case you were curious. And by the way, I cannot recommend that heat gun enough. All right, quick switch. So here you can see I've got an AN4 bolt and I've got a tap. They might be asking, what the hell are you doing? doing with that so there's two bolts that you need to have to secure the gas struts to the front of the panel so that you can support the canopy weight right and they're an 4-7 bolts so in your rv14 kit van sends you if you're for your finishing kit van sends you four an 4-7 bolts two of them however are special uh they're they have an extra about quarter an inch of threading on them well, not shockingly, I use those bolts somewhere else. <laughs> and they are in a place where they cannot come out. Actually, uh, what, where they are is actually holding down the roll bar's bottom fittings. It's a long story. I did it months ago. So knowing that I can never get those out again, and thankfully they are torqued properly, I just went ahead and got a tap, and I tapped the uh, other two that I had. And so everything works out. And when you might accidentally do that too, just remember what you need is a 1 quarter by 20 tap. 20? 1 by 28. It's one of those two. Alright, so now that uh, I've gotten that and I've gotten a bunch of these wires bundled up, we're going to go, I'm going ahead and I'm running these things. So the first time we tried this, it looked more or less right. The problem was bundling, right? So when you're bundling wires, yeah, uh, come to. I mean, I hadn't done this in a long time, and the last time I did wiring, folks, was like in the early to mid '90s, right? I was running Ethernet. No one gives a crap if your Ethernet's twisted, but when you've got, yeah, when you've got 20 wires going through a bundle, right? And let's say that they're rotated or they're or they're twisted up or they're twisted amongst each other. Uh, identifying them, one tough, two needing to replace them, even tougher right? Uh, but that all starts with good management and good wiring techniques. So, you, you know what? Here's wiring for dummies, right? Wiring for dummies 101. One, label everything, right? Get a good label maker like I do, like I have. And when I, when I and get a lot of shrink wrap printable material. So what I do is, let's say that we've just got a uh, thing that we need to supply power to. Great. What size wire do we need? All right. We need 22, let's just say. Uh, we need uh, 8 feet um, of red, and we need 9.5 feet of black. Why do we need more black? Because the black has to go all the way back to the grounding bus. Right. Okay. Great. What do we do next? Twist them up. All right. So we make the twisted pair, uh, which I just use. You've seen me do it with a drill bit and my vise, right, to twist the wires up. All right. What do we do next? Well, what you do is you get on a label maker, you type out what you want that thing to do, and then I print out like six copies of the same thing, right? And then I cut them up, and then I put them on the wire, and I shrink wrap them on about every two feet. I know it seems silly, but trust me, you, you it, it helps. Now, the only hard part is, right, because all these wires are cut with a lot of extra length. So where do you side, where do you put the excess? Do you run the excess up at the f top, right? At the top of the 
behind the panel or do you run the excess down where you actually need the piece of wire, right? Like if you're doing your microphone. Do you have the mic wire running way out the top of the panel or do you do it at the bottom? I've elected to do it at the site, which may or may not be the best idea, but it's definitely one of them. Uh, so that's a little hard because I sometimes don't have the labels right at the site where they're going to be wired up. So anyway, ramblings of an insane man. Uh, in the next video, we're going to work on something actually a little bit cool. So see you soon.